Do the Columbus Blue Jackets have the deepest goalie prospect pool in the NHL? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to Hockey Scouting Reports. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. The Columbus Blue Jackets potentially have the most goaltending depth in the entire NHL, having potentially four or five starters already there in their system, two or three that are ready to start as of right now. And so before we dive into all those players, as well as the forwards, wingers, and defenders that they have, if you like this content you want to see more, hit that subscription button as well as the thumbs up. Feel free to check out my Twitter as well as the Patreon. Also, my iTunes podcast have three episodes there. And lastly, if you didn't see it already, yesterday we looked at the uh, LA team, the Kings, to see what features they have. A lot of interesting talents there, so feel free to check that out. So let's get right into it. So the Columbus Blue Jackets, it's an interesting situation when you look at their center and winger and defensive depth compared to goaltending. In a lot of ways, goaltending is extremely deep, but there's virtually nothing at the other positions. There's three or four wingers that can make an impact, one center, and then one defender. It's a very odd situation in terms of how the prospect pool was built. When we looked at LA yesterday, it was very balanced overall, a little bit weak in goaltending, but overall very balanced. When we looked at the Rangers in the past, a team that does have good goaltending depth, very balanced as well in their system. So really, Columbus brings a very interesting dynamic where there's some balance with wingers, a ton with goalies, but then almost nothing with centers and defenders. And if you look at their center depth in the NHL, we know Pierre-Luc Dubois, 2016 third overall pick, he's that number one center, going to build around him, becoming an elite player. But after that, so many question marks. You have Nick Foligno, you have Alexander Wenberg, who have shifted from winger to center to see what works. You have Riley Nash, who's come in, kind of just as that bottom six player. And then who knows where uh, Boone Jenner is going to be playing, what can he do with his game? He's someone who's probably going to be a middle six, bottom six player, but they've forced him to play that uh, top six role. I really think that a team like the Jackets need to go out and purchase a center. Someone like last year, we saw Kevin Hayes on that UFA market goes to the Flyers. Someone like Paul Stasny going to Vegas. These are the kind of players that they need to bring in. When they had someone like Matt Duchesne, it was perfect. And so I think they need to be chasing someone this year in free agency who can be that number two center. But... Who knows when that's going to happen? Can they draft one this year? A little bit later in the draft order, depending on how the playoffs relegation round shakes out, but can they make someone work out this year in the draft? We'll have to see. But looking at who they have prospect-wise, Liam Foody is a center, looks to be maybe that number two center because there really isn't anyone else in the system. 18th overall pick, 2018. At that time, it was a reach. I didn't have a single prospect video on Liam Foody. I did not have him on any mock drafts that I had of the first and second round. And yet, this is someone that did slide up to 18th. We saw a similar story when Jay O'Brien slid up so far. Jay O'Brien, we haven't seen as much success with the flyer system. Foodie, on the other hand, a lot of success there. This year, captain of the London Knights. We know that London Knights have produced a lot of good talents recently. 45 games played, 28 goals, 40 assists, 68 points. So overall, very good showing. A very good offensive, but if you look at last year's total, 62 games played, 36 goals, 32 assists, 68 points, it's similar in terms of the amount of goals to assist, but he's really taken a step forward this year as a playmaker, and definitely over point per game by a significant amount. Draft year, 65 games played, 24 goals, 16 assists, 40 points. So there's been a consistent growth every single year statistically. We also see that stylistically, and I think that's what's going to make Liam Foody a game-breaker for the Columbus Blue Jackets. He also had two NHL games and one assist in those games. I think this is someone that can come in next year immediately, take a top-nine role, maybe start at the third-line center and move up to number two center, because I don't think there's a lot of other options. And when you have a second line that could have someone like Oliver Bajorek train who's healthy, Josh Anderson, when he's playing at that top level that he has at 30-goal potential, that is two very nice wingers to build with. I think Foodie would do fantastic with that. When you look at a young player like Alexander Texier or Emil Bemstrom, just two more players that you can build with, I think Liam Foodie's going to do very well with those players. World Juniors under 20 in Canada this year for Foodie, seven games played, three goals, one assist, four points. Wasn't a bad showing, wasn't a great showing, but when we look at who we played with on that team, we realize what happened. We see that if with that team alone, center-wise, they had Barrett Hayden, Dylan Cousins, Connor McMichael, Joe Valeno, Tyler Delandrea, and then Liam Foody. So when you have five centers above you that were all first-round pick centers within the past one or two years, 
it's going to be very tough to be that game-breaking player in that number one center. And so we saw Barrett Hayden had 12 points, Cousins had 9 points. And so really overshadowing what someone like Foodie brought. But in a lot of ways, him being able to play on the wing helped him progress. We also see Alex, uh, Alexander Lafreniere, who's going first overall this year, most likely 10 points in just 5 games. And so him having the same point per game as Barrett Hayden... This is someone that we already see how talented he is. So Liam Foodie had really a great system to play with for that World Juniors team. I expect him to shift over to the NHL system in Columbus very quickly and really uh, do a lot there that a team needs in terms of forward depth, especially at the center position. But what does he bring stylistically? Amazing speed, fantastic skater. This is going to be the story that we are talking about a lot with the Blue Jackets. Last, uh, last video uh, with LA, we frequently were talking about a very similar trajectory and tendency that each of the players had so feel free to check that out on what that was but this video it's a lot about snipers and it's a lot about good skating that's what we're going to be seeing especially the snipers Liam Foody this year like I said two games in the NHL I want to focus on what he did there 14-13 time on ice average for both games decent amount of ice time to just come in for two games we look at Bemstrom getting about 12 minutes in fact it was 12-16 for a full season 56 games played at the NHL level to see someone like Foodie just get two games, get more ice time, we see how quickly he able uh, was to adjust to the NHL system. He also had three hits and one takeaway. And so I think overall that's something that's really going to continue to build his game defensively. There are some gaps there, but I think he looked very decent in those two games. He's not very physical, needs to work on that more, is 6'1", 181, so certainly could be able to. He, like I said, he can shift to the wing, amazing puck handling, and his drive to the net is really quite impressive. We've talked in the past how someone like Brady Kachuk in his draft for 2018, amazing drive to the net. Philip Zadino, we've talked about it somewhat, but really Brady Kachuk was the vocal point. And I think similar to that, Liam Foody very similarly can drive to the net with force, with physicality. Now, if he can shift the physicality to the whole game, I think we're going to see a lot better from him. So that's really the only center I want to focus on because there really aren't many others in the system. And that's when question marks come up. Who are they going to draft this year? I think it has to be a defender or a winger. Now, knowing Columbus, they like to draft players mid-round who have high potential, but there are risks. Someone like Trey fix Wolanski was one of them. Alexander Texier, Emil Bemstrom. These are undersized players or a French player who doesn't always come from a hockey system, yet they have done well. And so I think someone like Justin Barron, who a uh, defender from Halifax Moosehead to the queue, who had a lot of potential going into this year, if anything, regressed and didn't show it. I think he could be a perfect mid-round pick for the Blue Jackets. But let's look at their wingers. There's four of them I want to highlight. First one, Emil Bemstrom, 117th overall pick, 2017. Definitely one of your best value picks. 5'10", 181, 21 years old. He played 56 games in the NHL, 10 goals, 10 assists, 20 points. Now, if we look at his time on ice, it's only 12-16, meaning that if he can continue to unleash his ice time, he should do even better. At the end, he was playing with Dubois because Kim Atkinson was injured. If you have a top line with Atkinson, Bemstrom even, as two snipers, I think that would be fantastic. He's a natural sniper, great hands, good offensive positioning. He had 1 minute and 21 seconds per game in power play time. For Columbus. So only having 12 minutes, but then 121 is power play. We see how effective Bemstrom has been. I think next year we could bump that up to two minutes, really see how he does there. Good offensive positioning. I want to see it better defensively, but I think he does play physical, does play defensive. And I think in a lot of ways, he's going to be one of the biggest steals that Columbus has had in the draft in the past few years. Very good hockey IQ. Last year in the SHL, he really showed what that potential is. 23 goals, 35 points, and 47 games played. I think Bemstrom is someone that has 25 goal potential. I think 30 is possible, but I think he needs a good playmaker to be with. But I think next year we're going to see him hit 20 goals, 40 points. I think he's really going to be about a 1 to 1 ratio type player, but I think it's very possible that he's going to be a 20 goal scorer. Alexander Texier could be the gem of this group. This year he did have some injury issues. 36 games played at the NHL level, 6 goals, 7 assists, 13 points. Only 20 years old, he was the 45th pick in 2017, coming from the French system. But since then, he's done very well. Went to Liga, 55 games played, 14 goals, 41 points. It's really what stepped him out as a potential steal. Last year, came in, did a few games for Columbus regular season, came in, played in the playoffs, and 3 points there. Wasn't a bad showing at all. Texier this year we expected full-time. Next year, most likely going to be that. He can play at the center position. 
So it is possible Texier is that number two, number three center, but I don't think there's a huge defensive ability in his game, and I think long-term he's best as a winger. I look at someone like Alvaro Bjorkstrand, I see a lot of similarities in their game there. I think that would be a good fit with him on the wing. Amazing puck skills, but the number one here is he plays with high speed. A lot of players have high top-end speed, but do they play at that speed for prolonged amounts? It's not always a common factor. Texier does, and I think that's going to make him a game-breaking player. We look at someone like Connor McDavid, always plays with top-end speed. When you look at someone like Dylan Larkin, he has top-end speed. Does he always play with it? Not as much. So there is a difference there, and I think Texier plays with top-end speed. He also has very quick lateral movement, which is going to allow him to play defensively when he uh, builds that into his game, but also to shift offensively in different positions and be ready to score uh, with different snipes. And so I think in a lot of ways, that's going to be a very effective part of his game. Like I said, very good offensive positioning. Overall, puck skills are very strong. Now, if you look at Trey Fix Wolanski, uh, 2018 draft pick, 204th overall, 187, 5'7". So he is undersized, one of the most undersized players in their system. AHL this year, very good success. Now, the numbers are not going to come off the board for you, so we'll talk about this. 43 games played, 12 goals, 14 assists, 26 points, 36, uh, 32 penalty minutes. When you hear those numbers, it doesn't come off the board to you. It doesn't seem very interesting. But when I tell you that the last 29 AHL games of his season, he scored 23 points, that's when we realized how on fire he was. Injuries allowed him to hit top six minutes in the AHL, really crushed it. I think he can step up and be a top nine productive role, maybe a middle six player for Columbus. He does have some physicality, only being 5'7", decent weight for his size, natural goal scorer, sniper once again, so very similar to Bemstrom in that regard. And the next player is also a bit of a goal scorer, insane speed. This is someone who might have better speed than Texier. Someone, I think, in a lot of ways, similar to Kyler Yamamoto in terms of this game-breaking speed that they can play with an elite playmaker. I think we could see that with Wolanski only being the 204th pick in his draft. Last year, WHL, 102 points, 65 games played in that draft plus one year. So there's a lot of talent from his game. You definitely cannot doubt what he has. I think Texier could be another or Wolanski could be another steal along with Texier and Bemstrom. So the wingers have been really quite nice steals for Columbus, being one second-round pick, but the rest being fourth and seventh rounders. Carol Max uh, Marchenko, 49th overall pick, 2018 from Russia. This year, international gameplay is really what's standing out to me. 14 games played, 6 goals, 13 points in the Russian system for international juniors. Also, 19 years old, played in the KHL, 31 games played, 7 goals, 9 assists, 16 points. I like to see those numbers overall. VHL really conquered that, 12 points, 9 goals, 14 games played. We see overall, Marchenko is a goal scorer at any level. He is uh, very good in terms of acceleration. Is his top speed as good as the others? I would say it's not, but I think his acceleration is probably one of the better ones in this group. Very good accuracy on his shot. I think Bemstrom in times just snipes and doesn't have as much accuracy. I think Zadina also has that issue sometimes, but I think there's a lot of accuracy that is not an issue with Marchenko. I think he's going to do very well in that department. Very good play when he has the puck on his stick. Question is, how does he do without the puck on his stick? I think that is something he needs to work on. But overall, I see a lot of snipers in this system. All four wingers do have goal-scoring potential. So, well, I think center needs a lot of uh, depth issues. I don't think wingers that spot. I think he doesn't need to be focused on as much. Defender, there's only one I want to mention. I think honorable mentions here would be Tim Burney. I think another one would be Gabriel Carlson, but he's been in the system for so long, since 2015, as that late first overall, first-round pick. We have not seen that progression. But Andrew Peak is who I want to mention I've been following Andrew Peake for about four or five years now. He went to Notre Dame uh, College Hockey, played three years there. He was the 34th overall pick in 2016. I actually had him going 28th. So I've always been high on him in terms of his development. And this year, just 22 years old, first AHL year, also played in the NHL, about halfway for both of them. 29 games played, AHL, five goals, 11 assists, 16 points. Then the NHL, just three points, one goal, 22 games. But what I love about his game is his vision is fantastic. Yesterday with LA, we talked about a lot of players with great vision. We've yet to mention that in any of these players. Fudita somewhat has it, but peak amazing vision from the back end. His IQ is fantastic, especially in the offensive zone. Good shot with power. He doesn't use as much as he should, though. I think this is someone in a lot of ways reminds me of Brian Dumoulin, someone who I mentioned in yesterday's video as well. Someone who has great defensive abilities, and the offense is just slowly but surely coming out and could be a 20-point player. I don't see Andrew Peake being this 40-point player, 
But I think when you have a system that has so many talented defenders, even someone like Savard, who we're not talking about when you see Wawenski, Seth Jones, and others, or even uh, Marcus Natavara, I think Peek is really going to slide in, be a middle six, maybe three, four defender. That's going to be a great one-two punch with someone who is offensive like Wawenski, but then brings in a, a defensive shutdown aspect. This is someone who I think will, over time, be one of the best power play and uh, also penalty kill players for Columbus. I think power play because he's a good passer, but I don't think he's going to score a lot of points. But I think penalty kill definitely is a shutdown defender. It's going to be a great job there for their system. So I like that as a defender. I think it's a, a great piece. I think it's a sure piece. I think he's going to do well. But there really isn't anyone else after him. Like I said, Bernie's a bit far off. And someone like Gabriel Carlson, we've seen AHL, NHL time, but we're seeing nothing consistent. I don't want to say he's a bust at this point, but he's 23. I think we're tending towards that direction. Now, goaltending is really where the depth comes in. We know Corby Salo and Merzlikens is those two goalies right now in terms of a starter backup. It's probably going to be a 1A, 1B type timeshare. But there's four other goalies I want to mention in the system that I'm sure we've all heard of, or at least some of them. First one, Venny Velvalayan, one of the best goaltending prospects not yet in the NHL. Daniel Tarasov, Matis Kalvenez, and then Peter Throm. So a lot of good, talented players here that are goalies. Peter Throm, will start with him because he's probably the weakest of the bunch. 155th overall pick in 2016, 6'4", 203. There isn't much known about his game because he's been a backup for NCAA. He's a junior now, University of North Dakota. 11 games played, 1.37.935. Very good stats this year. Started off the season with a record of 6'1 one, and 1. This is someone who is a winner. He's always been a winner, and he has natural confidence. Someone like uh, Kilenix, he does not have that confidence. And so I think when we're trying to see what can he build long term, I think this might be someone who's going to be an actual starter. But I think he does have that confidence to continue building with the team. Could progress well, potentially. He uses his size well. 6'4", huge goalie there. Plays with confidence, like I said. Last year, 14 games played, 2.72.880. I'd like to see him actually play more games than 11 or 14. We might see him in the edge shell this year as a backup. Now, if you look at Matthias Kovenis, this is someone who was undrafted, 23 years old, 6'2", 179. Played six NHL games due to injuries to uh, Merzlikens. And six games played, 2.95.898. AHL, 2.96.904. The issue here is he has very good positioning, but he often leaves the crease when he shouldn't. And it's, it's an interesting dilemma because you would think they go hand in hand. His positioning is great when he's in the crease, but outside of it, there's a lot of question marks. And I think a lot of that comes down to his judgment, which I think is a bit off. And I think you also see that in the way that he reads the play, he doesn't often expect the snipe or understand when it's coming or who it's coming from or what kind of player this person is coming towards him. And so I think in a lot of ways, there's a judgment lapse in his game that needs to be worked out. Now, if you look at someone like Daniel Tarasov, 86 overall pick 2017, if anything, he was the uh, star of this group for a long time. 6'5", 185, amazing size, 21 years old for Liga this year, 41 games played, 2.72.899. Last year, VHL, so coming over from the Russian system, 25 games played, 1.71.928. Tarasov has always been a winner. He's played two KHL games last year, did amazing, played VHL, did fantastic. He has always been a winner. Comes to Liga, not amazing, but when we see the track record of Columbus drafting goalies that have played in Liga, I think we can give a pass here. But overall, he's played very well at every level. He's very athletic, especially being 6'5", uses the size very well. He's kind of a mammoth butterfly type goalie. I think long term, this is someone who could be a backup for the system. Does he have starting potential? I don't think so. But I think this next goalie we're going to mention is the future franchise starter. Now, Corpy Salo, I think long-term, is going to be a better backup in the league. I don't see him as a starter. I think Merzlikens could be a starter. But I think the true gem here is Veni Vovalainen. 2018 draft pick, 173rd, 6'1", 183. Story here with all these players is late draft picks with goalies. Columbus does fantastic with goalies. And so if they draft one this year, which I don't think they would. They didn't last year. But if they do, I would watch that goalie very closely, see where he goes with his game. Could be could be a starter already. Um, and so if you look at his game, 6'1", 183, 23 years old, AHL, 33 games played, 2.76.901. Last year in Liga, 38 games played, 1.58.933. This is someone who has been amazing at the Liga system, someone who can do very well in the AHL system. I think when he comes up to NHL, this is someone that's instantly 
going to be someone that can take at least 20 games. I'll be looking at a 1ABC situation. We're seeing teams that are talking about having three goalies on the roster in case of injuries. Columbus, of course, had many. I could see Vovalainen next year coming in. We know Corpus Salo and Leakins was both resigned. So what is that situation long term? I think we could also see someone like Columbus move one of these goalies for a center. They need that center depth. They need to find a situation where that works, whether it's a prospect, whether it's bringing someone in. And so when you look at a system that needs a goalie that doesn't have one to move and be ready, someone like Vovalainen could be a starter for a team that needs it. We saw, uh, if you look at uh, Ottawa, we saw Hogberg come in, be a starter when he wasn't ready. So we can see that with any system. And I think Tarasov could be there as well. Uh, Kalenix, maybe. And so will they move one of them? I don't think it's going to be Vovalainen, but it's very possible if they move one for a center. The question is, who would be that center that can make their system work? What team has a center that they would actually give up? And I think if we can answer these questions and figure out who that team would be, it's very possible that something happens. I think with Seattle coming in in uh, a year, it's also possible a move happens here. So I would say, well, Columbus has the best goaltending depth in the NHL. It is possible that a goal uh, that a move happens here. Yesterday, I talked about how Rasmus Kupari might leave LA. I think this year with this team, someone like Venny Vovalainen could be a starter here. But if he's not, I could see him being moved for a center. Could see it with really any of these players. So thank you guys for watching. Comment below your thoughts. Which of these goalies is the long-term starter for Columbus? Have they already found it with their 1A, 1B situation? Is it one of these prospects? What do you think? Which team do you want to see as a prospect pool analysis next? I've done a lot of teams over the past couple years, so feel free to check those out, see which ones you like. But I've also done a lot of teams, uh, I have not done a lot of teams yet, so I'd like to hit the teams that I haven't done yet. Yesterday's and today's are teams that I have not done these videos on yet, so wanted to hit them. Also, lastly, I did two scouting report videos on Emil Bemstrom as well as uh, Alexander Texier after they were drafted last summer. Feel free to check those out on what their potential is. Now that we've had a season to readdress what their game is like in the NHL, the videos might be interesting to look back on and see what my thoughts were at that time. So thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoy more content, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.